Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a stand for a car simulator wheel. Now I have my own car simulator frame that I made in another tutorial, but I recently inherited my friend's G27 and wanted to hook it up to my Xbox One. So it's not going to have full force feedback, it's just going to be a spot of fun. So I'm making this stand that can just go over from my couch so I can play it nice and easily that way. Now the stand itself is going to be made from everything you can see in front of me here. It's going to be a super simple construction and I'm making it for under $50 Australian, which is approximately three US cents. Now I've modeled this frame up in Onshape beforehand and I'll make this file available for anyone who wants to get it afterwards so that you don't have to worry about doing any of the design work. Okay, so the parts we need, we've got a 450 by 900 MDF board. This was $8. Three 2.4 meter lengths of 42 by 90 pine. These were $6 each. Some quarter inch bolts and nuts. These were about $3 a packet. Some steel brackets. Uh, these were a dollar each for the small ones and a bit under $2 each for the large ones. A packet of timber screws. This was $4 and some rubber anti-slide things for about $3 and a 184 by 19 mil sheet of uh, pine uh, it's 1.2 meters long and this was $10 a drill, preferably cordless some sort of set square or ruler for ruling lines tape measure for measuring the lengths and a saw, you can use a power saw or just a regular saw to cut the lengths the first thing I had to do was drill holes in my brackets so that they would fit the bolts I wanted then I got my base plate and marked out the lines of the brackets. They go inside on the base plate so the timber can go on the outside. More on that in a minute. I like to torque up the first few screws and then do a whole bunch of them at once. Then mark the rear and offset them slightly outwards as per the CAD model. That way the timber will all line up nicely. I then cut myself some lengths of timber to make the supports. After the length of timber I've cut, I mark the holes for each end and then I drill them through. I then used the original piece of timber that I drilled as a template for the second one, lock them together with a bolt, so that way my hole on the other end will be true. That way we can ensure that we've got the same length side to side and the thing is not going to be asymmetrical. I then mark up my center holes where the lower supports will bolt into. See the CAD model for more. Then cut the top piece as wide as I need to support my wheel and shifter. Drill out two base plates to go under the top piece so it can bolt onto the rest of the frame. You can then start to assemble the frame. You'll notice that the offset of the brackets that I talked about earlier means that the timber sits nice and flush along the outside. See it all fits together really nicely. Once I've done the test fit I then want to screw my top plate on. Now I like to pre-drill these holes so as I'm screwing into them across the grain. I'm using three nice big wood screws here so it gets a nice rigid and solid mount. I'm kind of boring the holes so that the screws will sit nice and flush so I have more room to move my wheel and shifter if I feel like it. I can then assemble the top back on the rig properly and everything will fit together nicely. Now as you can see our rig is still quite a bit floppy and of course any sort of flex is the enemy of a, a good simulator setup. So we're going to put a cross brace across from here to here to finish off the job. To do the cross brace I mark and drill one end first screw it in and then I do the other end. Adding two cross braces here just because that's the amount of timber I had left to work with. So now we've got our basic rig together. We can see that it's super light um, and still quite rigid. So I'm gonna just put some little plates on the bottom of it so that we can get it nice and rubberized so that it's grippy and won't scratch the floor. And then I'll fit the steering wheel up and let's hook it up. Stick the grips on the bottom wherever you feel like you need them. Make sure you pick a grippy grip or otherwise it will slide. Handy feature of my design is that you can pull out the top bolts and then fold the whole unit down so it stores away in a nice tidy little package. I'm then going to fit up my pedals and wheel and get it all sorted on my couch. So we hop in and check it out. You can see it's a little bit tricky to get into. Once you're in it's okay. Um, your weight on the pedals helps weight it out a bit so it doesn't shake as much. In saying that there is still a bit of flex. now. I consider that an acceptable compromise for my application because I really have to move it on and off a lot because there's a sort of shared area. Um, and this isn't my serious rig, this is more sort of playtime. But if you were looking for a bit more rigidity, you could replace this lower MDF sheet with something much thicker, say like a 30 millimeter sheet of timber. Because the problem isn't actually the, the stiffness in the frame, the frame is plenty stiff. The problem is that if you look at that, I can actually lift the entire front of the simulator off the ground because the weight is quite far back. Now obviously the more weight and the more stiffness you have in this bit, the less of an issue that's going to be. So you really have to weigh up 
on portability versus performance when you decide what thickness goes the best. The rest of the frame though is super rigid, so you can keep the rest of the frame the same and just up the weight and strength and stiffness of the bottom member. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this video informative. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and check out some of my other videos, including that one on my other racing simulator. Hopefully, see you next time.